Hey everybody, this is Jared with Main Sequence Software. Today we're going to go over creating a profile in Sequence Generator Pro. Profiles help to contain all of your equipment and uh, your equipment settings. Uh, they help to keep you organized so you're not fumbling around in the dark, you know, trying to remember what your uh, arc seconds per pixel scale is or what filter you have in slot number three. Um, they're just a good way to keep all of your stuff organized, you know, all the settings that you use night overnight so that you don't have to keep entering those things in again and again and again. Uh, there's two ways to create profiles. Uh, the first one is with the profile manager and we're going to do that now. So you just go up to tools and uh, profile manager. From there, you know, you can name your profile whatever you'd like. I'm going to be setting mine up to use my uh, AT106 LE with my Quinine on my G11 mount, with my Quai filter wheel. I'll be using Elbrus for plate solving, but we'll get into that in another video because that's a whole new thing, or a whole different thing. And for auto guiding, I'm going to be using PHD. Uh, so to start, I'm going to go ahead and name this. Uh, I'm going to call it AT106LE, and I'm going to do one for my narrowband uh, filter, so I'm going to call this narrowband. This is just how I like to name mine. Um, for the camera, it's like the Quai. Um, you can't actually do gain and offset right now for ASCOM cameras, so that's why this is grayed out. These need to be set. There, your gain and offset needs to be set through your camera driver. Uh, for the cooler settings, I want to drop it down to negative 20, and I want to do that in five minutes. Uh, these are all just personal preferences here. Uh, for the warm-up, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and warm it up to 10 degrees, and I guess I'll warm that up in 5 minutes as well. Uh, the cool-down is a little more predictable um, because, you know, we're starting at ambient and going to negative 20. Uh, the warm-up, we're starting at negative 20, and we don't actually know what ambient is, so it's not as predictable. It'll just try and shoot for 10 degrees Celsius in that time. Um, if it doesn't hit it after five minutes, it just turns the cooler off. So I do want to cool down when the camera connects, and I want to warm up when the camera disconnects. Um, for my filters, like I said, I was going to be using that Quai wheel. And for the names, I always have Loom in my first slot, then HA, S2, and O3. And then I don't have you know, any of these checked, so I can just uncheck all those. For autofocus, uh, loom is, f uh, we'll probably bump this up, we'll go loom for 5 and then we'll do 20 seconds for each of these guys, because narrowband usually takes a little bit more. All my filters focus around uh, 20,000, uh, that's pretty close, that's a good starting point, uh, not exact for sure. Actually wait, is that right, 20,000? Yeah, I think it's 20,000. It doesn't matter too much for this. Um, for the loom, uh, this is the flats module. You can enter, uh, you know, if you want if you want to do flats, you can enter things over here, and you can create a, a flat sequence based off a uh, uh, your profile or a uh, an actual sequence that you've done. Uh, so for my loom, uh, we'll say the one by one takes five seconds, and then you can auto scale. Um, all your flats here. Uh, you can do that for all all these. I'm not going to go through each one of them. Uh, for the focus, I have a, uh, a Moonlight Focuser, which I don't have installed on this machine yet. Uh, so we'll just uh, set up with the, uh, the simulator. And I'll just use the values for my actual focuser. Um, well, we'll just do it for the Gemini so it looks a little bit better. Uh, so my fine focus steps, I usually use 10 for course I use 100. Uh, I don't need to reverse it. I am going to use autofocus, and I like to focus every degree change. I also want to use the sequence generator routine. If you have pinpoint, you can also use the pinpoint routine. Uh, when I don't have a filter in there, I want it to focus every five seconds. Um, going back up to these options, I also want to force the autofocus when it changes filters and I want it to run autofocus before the first frame of the sequence as well. Uh, for binning, I like to use uh, 2 by 2 or 3 by 3. We found that um, anything more than that 
if you're doing one by one exposures, that can be uh, uh, you know too large of binning, and you'll actually get better results the lower binning that you do. But you kind of have to balance that with download time as well. So for my camera, one by one, that's about a 12 second download time. Uh, two by twos, you know, considerably faster. It's about three seconds. So do two by two binning here. I like to do nine data points and uh, I use uh, 15 for my step size. I kind of change this around a lot. I haven't, I found that everything from about 10 to 30 steps works pretty decent uh, on my setup, but uh, 15 seems, that's, you know, what I've been using these days. So, uh, and whenever autofocus runs, it'll pop up a dialog box saying, uh, you know, that it's autofocusing. Uh, if you want, you can have this so that it'll stay up for a certain number of seconds before it uh, it disappears in the sequence resumes. So I'm going to have that pop up for 30 seconds. If you leave it at zero, once autofocus is done, it'll just close that dialog box and keep running. But I do like to see, you know, a lot of the times I'm actually out there with the scope and I like to uh, visually verify that autofocus was successful. So that gets the focuser set up. Over on the telescope tab, I'm going to use my Gemini telescope. Um, I don't need to park the telescope when the sequence completes. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, these slew values alone for now uh, for the nudge. Uh, we'll set those up in a different video. Uh, for the plate solve, uh, like I said, we'll do Elbrus, but different video here. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of explain all of these uh, all of these settings. And for the auto guide, I'm going to use a PhD uh, because of my setup. You know, I want an extreme dither, and I'm going to settle at 0 0.03. The smaller this value is, the longer it'll actually take PhD to get uh, back on track. 0.1 can take a long time before it settles and uh, with my pixel scaling I know that uh, 0.3 works pretty good. Uh, I don't need to select either of these options. Um, I keep uh, I'm usually right there you know whenever I'm guiding or whenever I'm imaging so uh, I'll leave the, um, the auto guider running whenever the sequence is done and I'm not going to worry about pausing uh, during image download. I don't I don't have any reason to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this sequence here, or sorry, this uh, this profile. You know, that has our camera, the filters, focuser, telescope, and the auto guider all set up. And now I'm going to uh, do a new sequence with profile, and I'm going to select that profile that I just created, and you'll see that it populates all this data here. If we open up the uh, or the control panel. You can see in the filters, you know, my filter list has all those values set, has, you know, all the settings that uh, I made for each one of these devices. Uh, it has the cooldown set, and pretty much just everything that I did in the profile, you know, gets copied over to the sequence. So now let's say that I want to go out and I'm going to shoot, you know, M42. And I'll just store it in, you know, my desktop there. Uh, you know, I want to do maybe some loom and uh, let's just say some HA. And I'm going to take, I don't know, five minutes of loom, you know, five minute exposures of loom, 15 minutes of HA. Uh, we'll do them both bend one by one and we'll do 10 of the loom and we'll say 10 of the HA. So from there, I kind of, you know, save this sequence. I'll move that back into uh, you know the area where I just uh, saved it. And names it by the the base name that I supplied already. So now I've got you know a sequence that I created from a profile in just a matter of seconds. So now if I want to go ahead and create another you know sequence, say I want to also shoot um, I don't know M57. So I can do a new sequence with profile. Select that same profile again, M57. I'll save it in that same stuff directory. And this time, let's say I want to do, you know, some loom and I don't know, S2 and say five minutes here, 10 minutes here. We'll do one by one, maybe two by two and 
10 and 9 minutes. So save this sequence, M57. So now we've created two sequences off the same profile. Now if you want to go through and say create a profile using a sequence, so you don't necessarily have to create this profile first. Uh, you can go through and you can select all of the items in here. You know, if you have a Canon camera and you don't have a filter wheel and maybe you don't have a focuser, but you still have your same, uh, you know, G11 mount, uh, you can go and you can save the sequence as a profile. So maybe I would call this AT106LE, you know, plus Canon. Now I have two profiles set up, and whenever we go into the uh, the equipment panel here or the control panel, you know, this stuff is pulled over from the other one. But you'll notice the cooler is off. No reason to have those selected. You can also go up and uh, edit that profile in your profile manager. So no filters no focuser, we can go ahead and deselect that. Uh, for the frame and focus, yeah, we'll use ISO 6400. I'm not going to mess with any of that, and we'll use the same auto guide values and just save this guy. You can also edit profiles in here, so if I wanted to um, maybe use this similar equipment that I have for the narrowband one and make a uh, LRGB profile. You just save that. Now I'm going to go through here and uh, edit the filters. So instead of loom, you know, I have red, green, blue, and I usually have HA in that fifth slot. So you know, for the autofocus, we'll change all these to 5 and for the HA we'll bump that guy up to 20 and set the same focus point. So now I've created three different profiles fairly quickly. You know most of the equipment is the same. It's the same mount. It's you know a lot of the same things are the same especially between these the narrowband and the LRGB profile but you can see how quickly and easily it is to go through and create multiple profiles even with different hardware and you have all those values ready for you so whenever you want to go make a sequence uh, it's right there so I hope this video helps to clear up you know how to use profiles uh, the different ways to use and manage your profiles and if you have any questions please drop by uh, mainsequencesoftware.com uh, or visit us on our uh, Yahoo group, uh, which is Main Sequence Software. So thanks again.